the Fender Tone Master amp line is growing, and it's actually growing. We're gonna talk about the new Super Reverb amp, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our spring store linked below for custom designed t-shirts, like the two new shirts that we're wearing today, which we didn't plan at all to be twins, but there you go. So if you like this shirt or the one we've been wearing in some other new videos, check out the spring store for the new stuff. So today we're talking about a new Tone Master amp from Fender. And uh, so that means the line's growing and it's a bigger amp. It's a real big amp. It's growing leaps and bounds. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's growing like <laughs> I do at Thanksgiving. Yo. Not this way, but like, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of everything. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're not familiar, tell us what the Tone Master amp has been or so, the series. Yeah, so the Tone Master are solid state true, beautiful, in-depth emulations of classic tube amps from Fender. We've had the Deluxe Reverb, we've had the Twin Reverb, and now we've got the Super Reverb. Which, we've had the blonde versions of those yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, so the Blondies, slightly different voicing than you know the regular blackface ones, um, but this is not the first one that I would have thought they would have Okay, grown. I was about to say yeah. that. So what did you think after the Deluxe and the Twin would be the next one? I thought it was going to be a Princeton. Me too. I thought it was going to be a Princeton. You'd think that they would, you know, twin, deluxe, and then But maybe, maybe do... there's a reason behind it. So, because one of the benefits of this, it's a big 4x10. Yeah. Have you ever lifted an old one? No. Uh, I don't want to die, you know. <laughs> I remember picking one up, and it has, like, that, that rubber handle. Yeah. And it's so heavy that you can actually feel the rubber stretching in your hand going like, this is gonna snap at any point. And usually yeah. they do at some point. Yeah. Because they're so heavy. You see casters on them all yeah, the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah you, well same with twins. Like, yeah, yeah. If, if someone has a real tube twin or super reverb out in the wild, it's usually on casters. Yeah, you're gonna get hurt. <laughs> um, but yeah, so super reverb being 410, um, it makes sense because it's an even louder amp. And Princeton is a loud amp, but yeah. it can be quiet. You know. Well, Princeton's already small, yeah. and one of the benefits of this is you know, when you take the tubes away and you don't have that massive power supply that's needed to power the tube, you know, power section and everything, the amp gets a lot lighter. So what we saw with the Deluxe and the Twin, and I still do from time to time, if I don't see the little badge down in the bottom right uh, corner that says Tone Master, Master. Um, then I kind of position myself to pick it up. You ever done that? You got to pick it up and it's, you're thinking it's heavier than it is and yeah. then you're like almost throw it up above your head. Yeah. Um, so I still do that with these amps from time to time. And this one I think benefits probably the yeah. most outside of the twin of the Tone Master treatment because you've got all of the rich sounds. Like you were saying, it's not even modeling. I mean, it's real emulation yeah. of these amps. Yeah. 31 pounds, I think? 34 pounds, something yeah, like that? Yeah, it says it on there. Uh, 36 pounds. 36 yeah. pounds. Which? 36 pounds. Yeah, how much is a regular Super Reverb? Probably 90 pounds. 90 pounds, probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's incredibly light, but you've still got all of that power from 410s, which is its own thing. You know, you can talk about what's happening in amps with the circuitry, but the other thing that's often, I think, not included enough, because people tend to obsess what types of tubes does it have? Does it EL84s? Does it have 6V6s, 6L6s? You know, the other thing is the type of cabinet. Is it uh, open back, closed back, semi-closed? And what kind of speakers it has? Yeah. Does it have an 8-inch speaker? Does it have a 10-inch speaker? Does it have a 12-inch speaker? These 4 by 10s just sound different than two 12s or a single 12 yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, and they're Jensen's. They're Jensen's P10Rs. Yeah. So they're the classic Al Nico magnet speakers that you would expect in a Super Reverb. Um, yeah. But since it is not tube, it's kind of freed. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of tube purists out there. Look, I'm I'm with you guys. I'm one of your one of you guys. But I got to tell you, when the first Tone Masters came out, we took them to guitar shows, and amp builders could not tell that they were solid state. Yeah. The one thing that is sort of a giveaway, but it's like this mind trick, is the attenuator. So 
all of the tone masters have the attenuator to where you can go down. I think on the deluxe it's 0.2 watts, mm -hmm. the twin and this one I think it's 0.5 watts. 0.5, and I think this one, does it have the most settings? Yes. Because it goes, this is a 45 watt amp. And that's not really what it is. Yeah. That's their reference. So it's they're referencing 45 watt amps. It's actually a lot louder than that because you, you know, you've know you noticed tube amps are always louder typically than their solid yeah. state counterpart. So this is, I think the twin is actually 200 watts to yeah. Yeah, equal yeah. what it does. So this is probably around 200 watts, but it's a 40 watt and it's attenuated down to 0.5, but there's six different settings Yeah, on it. so you can go 0.5. You can find your sweet spot for whatever gig you're playing or yeah. you know however you want to work it. The thing is, that's always kind of the, the trick to show people with how that attenuator works is it will give you the really pushed tube sound that you would only get when you dime out a super reverb or a twin or anything like that. So in which case you're deaf, yeah. you're sterilized, never having children. Yeah, you're done. Like it's bad. Pretty much. And by yeah. the way, I'm not saying that happens. Carlos Santana says that happens with too loud of an amp. So yeah, and I mean, he should know. Guy. He should know. <laughs> um, but so with the super reverb down at 0.5 watts, and then like you'll see in the demo, you got to dime it out. You got to see how it sounds. It, it's the only thing that kind of messes with your mind because you're hearing the sound that would typically accompany like you falling over or something, yeah. but it's at a really moderate, nice volume. And being able to do that at you know six different steps along the way, um, you can get a nice, loud, clean tone mm -hmm. still without going crazy. And then if you're at one watt or five watts or whatever, and you're playing a live show and you're really rocking out, you can still drive it. It's going to be palatable, you know, and, you know, listenable. Yeah, and, you know, I, there's some people that would probably say, well, you can do that with two-stage amps anyway. Yeah. But, no, you can't. There's actually a difference. So I have a two-stage amp. You have a two-stage amp. There's lots of two-stage amps out there. Um, I think Boogie kind of invented it. And the whole idea is that you have a second stage, a preamp stage of tubes that you can attenuate the, you know, the gain on separate from master volume. And when you do this, you're able to really saturate those tubes so that it breaks up at a lower volume. That's kind of the same thing that we're talking about here, but it's different because on a true single channel tube amp, you know, where you don't have multiple gain stages, when you get it broke to break up, like when you pull up, when you dime a twin or deluxe, what is causing that overdrive is the power section. And that's a different sound. Yeah. And in fact, I believe that's one of the reasons that overdrive pedals have become so popular is because what a lot of them are kind of aiming toward, not all of them, but a lot of them are trying to replicate that power stage saturation breakup yeah. that you get on a classic tube amp, like a pushed fender. Um, and so what you get with the attenuation on the Tone Masters is you get that power section overdrive, which is just different than a preamp section overdrive. And I like it. Yeah. I like that sound a lot. It's a special tone for sure. Um, and so on this one, as you can see, it's got the normal channel and it's got the vibrato tremolo. Mm -hmm. But it's got the vibrato section. Um, running over there, it's got a bright switch on both. A lot of different options tonally. Um, so it's got a really nice reverb that we've seen across all of the Tone Master line. And the reverb really deserves a spotlight. Yeah. Because I remember when these first came out, Fender made a point of really kind of talking about how much power is there. There's more power just in the reverb circuit than there is in an entire like Mustang GT amp. And there's a reason for that. One of the chinks in the armor of a lot of modeling amps has been that there's a there's a finite amount of memory, you know, that yeah. the circuit's able to work with. And so because of that, there are little, if you listen very carefully, telltale signs, and probably the most classic is when the reverb is decaying and it just cuts off. Yeah. Real spring reverb doesn't do that, obviously, because it's a spring tank, right? Yeah. And so there's this organic kind of craziness of like, the sounds that are echoing in there, and it's just going to reverberate until it is done. Yeah. You know, even down to the, that little finite bit that you can barely hear. So if you're listening closely on a digital modeling amp, you'll typically hear that decay eventually just stop. Yeah. Uh, but that's not the case here. 
you can crank that reverb and you can just let it slowly decay and it will do that. And, and you also get those other weird things that like a yeah. very cranked reverb tank does. Yeah, it's very know? cool. Um, really cool sound and like the twin, it's got the little kickstands on the side yeah. too. I mean, it's just, it's basically exactly the same except for what's going on in the guts. Um, but demo wise, um, I got it on one watt for the clean because it's a little louder. It's push, you know, it's, yeah. it's nice because I just want it to be sparkling clean. And then when it comes to the drive stuff, went down to the 0.5 and just dimed everything, a little more reverb on there. And then um, tremolo wise, you know, it's a really nice tremolo as well. It's like the sort of tube tremolo yeah. sound. Um, that swampy kind of tremolo. Yeah. yeah, so just a little bit of that, just a kiss so you can kind of hear, because we all know what it sounds like when it's pop, 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 pop. But um, yeah, I think that the sounds that just playing around with this today that we've gotten on it, it really, it sounds really nice. So, well, cool. Well, let's yeah. check it out. So uh, pay close attention to some of the things and you're, what you're going to hear really are some fantastic tube amp sounds without the tubes. So yep. Check it out. So there you have it, fantastic tones coming from the Super Reverb Amp. And I think some of the, the technology in here is also very beneficial that we didn't talk about. And that is like the impulse response cab out. You know, you have a direct out with XLR. Uh, it's got ground lift on it. You, can, you have cab simulation and impulse response on there that typically you would otherwise have to have like, you know, a thousand dollar or more, yeah. you know, Oxbox top or something like that to you know, really deal with that. And, and other manufacturers have done this before, 
Boogie, I think, was one of the first ones to have like their cab clone technology in there to mix results. I think this is a really good application of it and works because it's not a tube amp. It works really, yeah. really well. Um, and of course, you've got your attenuation. I I'm curious what you think before I say this, who you think this amp is for versus the other Tone Masters. Mm, I think it's for like the working musician guy. I think that, or gal, um, somebody who wants to be have that great tone that they really love, especially, you know, classic Fender amps that mm -hmm. everybody wants. Everybody wants a twin or a super or a deluxe. Um, and somebody that wants to bring that tone with them, doesn't want to break their back, and also wants to be able to play a moderate sized venue yeah. and still be able to get the tone that they use the amp for, you know. Um, I think it's really versatile for anybody, but that's kind of my thought is somebody that wants to walk in with their guitar and their amp and like a chord bag and not like be dying, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, what do you think? I wholeheartedly agree. You know, I, thinking about the the lineup, you've got the deluxe and the twin, both in the normal, you know, black Tolex yeah. and as well, as well as the blonde, which are cool on their own right. We've done videos on that. If you haven't seen, you should check that out in the link above uh, so that you can understand the difference. It's not just aesthetic. Yeah. There's tonal differences to those amps. But both of those amps, more so the deluxe, strikes me as the amp that you can use in small to moderate venues and you can use at home to have the best of both worlds. You can have the, your nice cleans with a ton of headroom and you can crank it down and you can have bedroom volume mm -hmm. while having breakup, which yeah. you otherwise wouldn't be able to have. An amp like this, once you go to twin size and definitely to this size, I think what you are trying to accomplish is what you said. This is to fill out a venue. This is because you're gigging, but you can crank it down to adjust to any size venue that you want based upon what you need musically um, and have a lightweight amp to do it with. And so I think, particularly as we're coming out of the pandemic, people are gigging again. If you're looking for a larger amp or you like that tonal, you know, kind of focused sound that you get out of the, the four tens, mm -hmm. because that's the biggest difference. That the a twelve inch speaker is going to give you kind of a lot more mid range, a lot more low end out of it. The the tighter speaker gives you a tighter, punchier sound. Yeah. And when you have a four of them, it is this wall of tone that's coming out. And that's why there's so many, you know, rock legends over the years that went with those four by tens. Yeah. You know, because they're just it's a great sounding really cab. Nice. Um, so yeah, I think it's great for that gigging musician. There's something to be said as well. So for the demos, American Ultra Jazz Master, they got noiseless pickups in them. Yeah. Tone Master, it's not a tube amp, mm -hmm. but it sounds just like one. There's something to be said about Fender keeping things very classic, but making those small. I mean, they're big changes in the grand scheme, but mm -hmm. something like noiseless pickups on a guitar that you know had very noisy pickups like Jazzmaster pickups, yeah. you play 65, it's gonna be super noisy. And then something like this that's a classic amp, but not super heavy and right. not you know doesn't have to kill you. It, it's nice little updates and improvements that they've made just to cater to like the actual yeah. true you know musician. Because the classic things are beautiful, but they have their shortcomings. Like the yeah. beauty comes at a bit of a cost. And, what some of the modern stuff, and some people are going to hate to hear this, but what some of the modern improvements does is it tries to retain as much of that beauty as possible while getting rid of as many of those shortcomings as possible Yeah. so that you can try to have your cake and eat it too. And yeah. I think they do a pretty good job of it. If you don't like them, then the, you don't buy them. You buy, you know, it's, Fender hasn't stopped making tube amps. In fact, yeah. they're making some newer tube amps yeah. because I... I love tube amps. I'm gonna yeah. not stop buying tube amps. But you know, I love these Tone Masters, and uh, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to add a deluxe. And why a deluxe instead of like a super reverb? Because I don't need that big thing in my bedroom. Yeah. And I have a gigging amp. Yeah. So, but if you have one amp to do it all, I think that's probably pretty killer. Plus, there's nothing wrong with big amps. They're pretty cool. They're cool. Yeah. So. But it's a really cool addition to the line. Who knows if they're gonna do. Oh, they'll do a Princeton at some point. But I, from, I want a from basement, a, dude. Can you imagine how light that's going to be? Like five pounds. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they should add more tubes. They add a bigger power section. Make it a heavy Princeton. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's stupid. So I think from both of us, it's definitely on the you should buy list. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, all the new products from Fender, 
They're, this summer, rolling out, everything's been cool. Yeah, so it's been very, very cool. Yeah. We're really excited. So if you want more information about that amp or the rest of the Tone Master series, head over to our website at alamomusic.com. If you don't want to type it in, we've done the work for you. You can just click on the description below to go and check out that stuff. And you can chat with someone. Sometimes you're chatting with Cooper um, and get all the information that you need. You can talk about your particular applications and what works best for you so that we can help guide you through all of the options that are available to find the right thing to suit your needs. Because at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the one that is going through a cranked amp driving your neighbors crazy. Yep. That's how I live. That's how I roll. So. That's the truest one you've said yet. <laughs> mm. So anyways, if you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. And also, if you want to get more involved in the description, check out the link for our Patreon page and become an Alamo Music Insider for all the fun there. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.